All right, let's do a little bit of a short review from yesterday. See if and remembers what we did yesterday. So here we have again. This is one of the models, the global forecasting system. Okay. So this is the most popular model. Drake and Paul just studied that right there. Now, from yesterday, what are the three things that are necessary for a development of, you say, rain or a thunderstorm? First of all, what? Wind. Wind. But not to the sun. General than wind. The sun. You need the sun. Okay. Oh, right sure. the first thing, huh? Sun. Pressure. Not specifically. Pressure. It is a change in pressure that happens. So cold and hot. Cold and hot. Like so that will that will be the sun. Okay, the sun influences the temperature. The next thing we need in order to have water. rain, you need to have water vapor. Okay, so moisture. Okay. Okay. Moisture. Then the last thing that you need is yes, it is a change in pressure. You need a lifting mechanism. Okay. A lifting mechanism. So, an example of a lifting mechanism will be yes, wind. Okay, but there are other different lifting mechanisms. Okay, for example, a cold front. Anyone? Can anyone give me? Can anyone give me an idea of what a cold front might be? It's cold. It's a change from a warmer air mass to a colder air mass. It's like the transfer. It's like the movement of air between a cold, a warmer and colder air mass. Okay. So, for example, let me show you that low pressure system we're going to be getting on here on Monday. Okay. So let me go to Monday morning and go to a regional model chart. Okay. Here's the thing about low pressure systems. Okay. With every low pressure system. Let me back it up a little. Here's how it's usually set up. Okay? Low pressure systems rotate in clockwise motion. Okay? So, or at least the wind around a low pressure system rotates in clockwise motion. Okay? So, with low pressure, this is usually how your wind moves. Okay? And as it moves towards the center, or as it makes its way closer to the center, it will begin to rise up into higher levels of the atmosphere. Okay? And this can happen in multiple places around the low pressure system, but um, the main central area of where this lift is going on is near the center portion of it. Okay? But places where it can lift sooner would be more around this general area. Okay? Right here, here's. Here's what this is. Right here is your cold front. Okay? Why is this your cold front? Well, first of all, you can kind of see that there are rain showers in front of it. Here's why this is your cold front. Okay? Where is this wind coming from in the low pressure system? It's coming from the what direction? The north. Okay? Where is air usually colder at? The north. The north. All right? So as it moves, it's going to move down towards parts of, well, in this case, Illinois, Indiana. It's going to come from the cold mini air, all right? Move into this area. And then this air mass behind it is pushing this warmer air mass away, all right? Because it's moving, this low pressure system moving off to the east, all right? This warmer air mass that the low pressure system is pulling down is pushing the warmer air off to the east, all right? Now, here's what happens when warmer air gets pushed off. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself for the meteorology class, but here's what happens, okay? So you have your plume of warm air, right? Let me just imagine I'm drawing this right here, okay? This is the surface. You have your plume of warm air. It's hot, it's humid, and it's sticky, okay? It's hot, humid, and sticky. Here is what is happening. The cold air, is cold air heavier or lighter than warmer air? It's cold air is heavier, all right? It's heavier, okay? Because it's more dense, okay? When it's when it's cooler, it's more densely packed, okay? Air is more densely packed. That's why when you breathe and when it's cold out, it can feel a little bit hard to breathe on cold days because the air is a lot more dense, okay? 
So, when a cold front moves through, you have the heavier, colder air at the surface pushing through, okay? So just imagine that this is the cold air, okay? And this is the warm air. What is happening to that warm air as the cold air is pushing it forward? The marker squeeze. It's pushing the warm air upwards, okay? That is a lifting mechanism, okay? Because warm air will rise above the cold air. That is why you get high top thunderstorms or cumulonimbus clouds when a cold front passes through, okay? Because you have that warm air lifting to get above the more dense cold air, okay? That is why you see more commonly the stronger storms during a cold front, okay? Whereas with the warm front, okay? A warm front, you have you have kind of a cooler air mass, okay? It's cool, but with a warm front, here is what is happening, okay? Your division line looks like this. Why? Because the warm air is denser, less dense, less dense than the cool air, okay? So as that warm front, so the warm front in a low pressure system would typically be right around here, okay? Or right before a cold front passes through. A warm front, what happens is it pushes, it slowly pushes the cool air out, okay? From top to bottom, all right? So as you go, so that's why before a warm front moves through, you usually see higher clouds, okay? Like the cirrus clouds that you normally see, okay? The higher level clouds, you get, you know, high altitude clouds, and it slowly starts to progress lower. It's because that warm air mass is trying to push that cool air mass out. But what it needs to do is the warm air needs to completely overtake the cool air from top to bottom. And that takes a little bit. That's why also you see a lot more just general rain showers with warm fronts because it's not really a strong lifting mechanism. It's really just you have the warm air hitting the cool air and then it's just dropping all this moisture there as a result. That's why it's usually cloudy and rainy with warm fronts. Rather than cold fronts, you have the sunshine, then you have that sudden lift, and thunderstorms are produced, okay? That's kind of the general difference between a warm front and a cold front, and we'll go over it again in the class, but it's just, it's good to have an idea of that since we're actually looking at models themselves. Any questions about warm fronts and cold fronts?